Good evening guys, what is going on? It is the Earthmaster here on the live stream on this beautiful Tuesday evening. It is September 23rd, getting really close to October. I can't believe it. Uh, 2021's the date, about 6, 12 p.m. California time. And the, the latest quake of 5.2 out here in an area where it's been relatively quiet. We talked about this quiet activity last night. Over the last 24 hours, we have seen a slight, just a slight increase in earthquake activity around this region, including a pair of some pretty deep earthquakes around the Fiji Islands area. Let's go ahead and check out what's going on here on the USGS map of the last 24 hours of earthquake activity. You can see that 5.2 around the uh, Vanuatu region that uh, striking at about 9.5 kilometers compared to the super deep earthquakes just south of Fiji. Uh, a couple fours, upper fours, one measuring 571 kilometers below surface. Pretty deep deep earthquake activity so a little ramp up of movement in this region of the uh, Pacific still looking at some very quiet activity up here off the coast of Japan kind of watching that uh, pretty closely uh, we did see a little further movement uh, south of the uh, Japan area around the Indonesia area including a uh, 5.3 within that region the 33 kilometers and also over here uh, 14 uh, 14 kilometers for that 4.3. Uh, we are seeing some aftershock activity following that uh, pretty large quake over around the Crete region. Looks like uh, 5.3 so far today, far as aftershocks go. That's the largest one. Looking back over the last week or so, you can see uh, quite a bit of movement in the Crete area following that, uh, what was that, 6.0 earthquake. Shaking things up quite a bit in this part of Greece. So, looks like... Uh, so far, the 5.3 is the largest aftershock, and that occurring today, um, way earlier today, maybe possibly late last night, looks like with that UTC time. Um, so yeah, still kind of, still kind of popping off out there. That's uh, typical of some earthquake uh, aftershocks of that magnitude. The Atlantic looks pretty quiet, except for this little 4.6 in the Mid Atlantic Ridge area. Uh, kind of kind of the big picture over here along the west coast once again just still continuing with a lot of movement into the Intermountain West and the west coast of California including the Sierra Nevadas uh, let's go ahead and check out the eastern areas over here real quick uh, looks like uh, Arkansas getting in on a little bit of movement little rock north of there getting a 2.3 and looks like a couple smaller aftershocks it's kind of up against the uh, New Madrid area. Go ahead and check out the U.S. Hazard here. And it kind of sits um, to the southwest. But in a way, it's kind of marked here on the hazard map um, with its own hazard separate from the New Madrid area. Uh, in this little regional um, mark here that the USGS has uh, due to the, the uh, fault systems that are out there. New Madrid area. Looking pretty quiet on the USGS map today. Some further movement around the Midland area and also Pecos, Texas getting in on some activity once again out there in that part of Texas. Movement along the Intermountain West region. You can kind of see it up here, stretching all the way up into Montana through, through Yellowstone. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the activity around the Antelope Valley area. Once again, getting quite the swarming of activity quite a bit. Looking at about 33 epicenters, or 33 uh, earthquake epicenters out here in the Antelope Valley area. The Mono Lake still seeing some movement. Gonna have to watch this area pretty closely. I'm gonna kind of dig into a little bit uh, more detail what's going on here in a future update if this continues. Uh, Long Valley Super Volcano, dwindling activity. Ridgecrest looking at some further movement uh, up and down that fractured area. Uh, from the earthquakes a couple years ago. Southern California looking a little absent in earthquakes here. And this is the all magnitudes. Not seeing a whole lot of movement uh, for that matter on any of these fault systems. No swarming. Just a, just a little bit of movement here off the San Jacinto Fault area. But this looks pretty absent when it comes to uh, your typical earthquake activity in California. A little 3.3 on the... Eh, was that the creeping section? Pretty close to the creeping section. See, park field section um, 
and then you get down to the southern branch a little bit of movement on that area and also up north around the uh, what do we got here mount shasta sits up here up in the trinity mountains if there's anything left up there it's probably all burnt down unfortunately the 1.7 near dunsmere uh cascadia for the most part along the coast pretty quiet we did see some further movement off the coast of oregon way out there around the blanco fracture zone that's this little area right here cascadia subduction zone sits right in this region 3.4 well off the coast and some movement into the cascades around mount rainier once again looking at the trimmer map along the cascadia uh, this could explain um this is still continuing i mean this is today's activity 327 epicenters of trimmer along the cascadia mostly confined to the north uh, northern part up here and also down to the south where we've seen uh, quite a bit of movement on the trimmer uh, scale over the last week uh, we're talking well over 3,000 epicenters of trimmer um, in the cascadia subduction zone that continues today not as intense, but still continuing. Uh, volcanic seismicity around the Mount Rainier Rainier area. Keep forgetting to uh, pronounce that correctly. There's that activity we've seen on the USGS map. You can look at some of these seismographs here. And maybe we can uh, see what's going on. We always check this out whenever we see some movement. And uh, let's go back to the previous day. Uh, let's see here if it's gonna load sometimes it's what okay we're missing a little bit of data there but there is some earthquake activity a couple small quite a few small microquakes there I'm not even sure if they're being registered but there's no doubt they are there quite a bit of them no significant movement no magma uh, or hum harmonic trimmer that I can tell in that uh, area Yellowstone National Park. What do we got going on here, folks? A little bit of earthquake activity around the Mary Lake area, Norris Junction. Uh, looks like Purple Mountain and Maple Creek picking it up as well. But for the most part, uh, dwindling earthquake activity there at the park. Some wind or weather events uh, computi uh, computing, uh, interfering, I should say, on the seismograph stations there. Not for sure what the weather's like up there, but uh, a lot of times thunderstorms, high winds and whatnot do affect vibrational uh, readings in the ground uh, that the seismograph stations pick up. Uh, let's see. Do do do. Far as solar weather goes, looking at uh, things calming down. Looks like over the next couple days, there in the green, far as the KP indexes and then the uh, solar uh, uh, disturbances here on Earth. Although October first, kind of expecting a um, some movement from a uh, CME that was produced. Solar flare activity, still active. There's a big coronal hole up here facing north. This is the Earth side. Uh, sunspot activity scattered out and about, but we are looking at uh, things kind of picking up here, folks. Over the last few days, we've seen activity ramping up. We'll see what's coming around the bend on this side of the sun in the coming days. But for now, uh, quite a few sunspots kicking up there facing the Earth side. All right, guys, hope everyone has a great night out there. Stay safe out there, and we will chat you guys another time. Peace out.